the lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? I recommend watching your tone with me, lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first. About this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. Stunt is correct, as is shunt, which you will be intimately familiar with as we're dissecting you. Nonsense! Confer? Colleagues? Those are two words I do not recognize. Dr. Klein, I must intersect. Please, do not harm the lobotomite. I'm not going to harm it. I'm going to dissect it until it's dead. Why the sudden intersection, Dalla? I cannot stand a breathing, a sweet breathing organism, breathing in and out to suddenly not breathe. We must keep it alive. For study. A slow study. Gala, these vocalized pauses are unlike you. What do you care? Klein, uh, you know, this lobotomite, it's a great sounding board. You respect ideology, right? This one's, well, it's got good ideas. Silence, Doctor O. This is a think tank decision. Save your objections until after I have decided our course of action. You know what, Klein? Stick a straw in your tank and suck yourself. Long and deep. And my name is Zero. Yeah, a big fat Zero with a slash through it. The slash as a designator of... Why, that is brilliant. But how did you... The lobotomite taught me that. Taught me a name is more than, um... That I should take pride in... Things. Like... Names. And... You know what? Forget it, Klein. I hate you! And your theory of Bringle Beam Oscillation? The Chinese had it first, you copycat! How dare you! Brainial beam oscillation was solely my discovery. I expressly told you that and deleted all evidence to the contrary. It's two, eight. Why are you acting like this? You've never refused to commit necessary surgery before. And this lobotomite needs its surgery. A noble speech, but there is no room in my vocabulators for friend and lobotomite in the same sentence. The very concept! <laughs> Revolting. Perhaps you are irradiated with camaraderie radiation. We have chems for that. We can save you from your emotional addiction. I, for one, cannot bear to let this continue. I don't see what is to be gained by throwing another body into our labs. Especially one that has done us a service. Gone where we feared to go. 
This lobotomite doesn't deserve our knives. It deserves our respect. We should care for it. Feed it. Nurture it. Give it the life Gabe never had. Why am I even listening to you fools? Enough of this mutinous chorus. If there's a word I hate, it's mutiny. And the word jism, which never made any sense to me. It's ridiculous putting j and z together like that. It's nonsense! I count as five. Like the mighty human hand I once had, with its five penises clenched in a fist. Nonsense! The mathematics of this situation are on our side, Lobotomite. I believe... No, wait. Hmm. Carry the two, and then... Hmm. If this were a democracy, I would be concerned. We are too scientific for that. So just surrender. You dare use logic against me? That's no deal at all! There's a whole world beyond the crater, filled with ideas and possibilities! We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, prodded at it, made it squirm. For you? And for science? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit was impressed by the amount of exploration the Courier had undertaken. Facilities believed lost, destroyed, or ones that had simply gotten up and walked to new locations had been rediscovered by its intrepid new master. Internally, the artificial personality debated as to whether it preferred the old management to the new and concluded that the Courier's thorough approach to research and investigation was admirable and worthy of its respect. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, 
carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the Magneto Hydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy, except he found it peaceful there. Tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind old Jefferson. With sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter-frequency that saved Big Mountain from sonic invasion in 2910. If you didn't hear about it, good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after, the stealth suit had left it, without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ, and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility.
The courier left the brain at the big empty. A strange thing to say, but it was the truth. Brains are less important than they may seem. When the courier's body finally passed, the brain was saddened. It kept on, remembering the vessel that had once contained it. Even at the end, when it started to fail, however, the brain resisted going into a floating chassis like the think tank. It never said why. Perhaps it was out of respect for the courier's body. All things must come to an end. And to hang on to the past is something that's not to be undertaken lightly. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond. Although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier, and if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more. But the stories in the big empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the big empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone.